Week 9, problem 7. The values of the components in the circuit are L equals 200 millihenries, resistance equals 300 ohms, resistance 2 equals 400 ohms, epsilon is 10 volts, use downward as a positive direction for all currents. Find, and bam, about a billion things. A billion, uh, it's, it's actually only 8. Hopefully some of them repeat. We'll see. Mm, maybe. All right, immediately after the switch is closed, after being open for a long time. The current through the inductor. Ah, got it. All right, so you close the switch, and you're going to have current going through the resistor and current going through the inductor. So inductors, I say, using the hydraulic analogy, uh, water wheel. So it's going to oppose a change in current. So current, before you start, is going to be zero. Therefore, immediately after you close the switch, it's still going to be zero because the inductor opposes a change in current. So immediately after the switch is closed, after being open a long time, means everything's wound down, uh, the current through the inductor is zero because it started off at zero, and immediately after it starts, it's going to stay at zero. So zero. Bam. Yes. Feeling accomplished. Current through resistor two. All right, so resistor two is going to take all the current. So current equals voltage over resistance. In this case, the resistance is going to be so we have 10, and the resistance, since they're in series, is going to be R1 plus R2, which will be 700 ohms. Hmm. I'm good with that. 700. So 10 divided by 700. Oop. 10 divided by 700. Then they want it in like milli, so I'll multiply by 1,000. 1,000. There we go. So, 14. Make sure that looks reasonable. One, two, three. Yeah, I'll say 14.3. So I'm going to call this, four, ah, let's call it 14. 14 is good enough for me. 14 milliamps. Okay, that seems, that seems good. Then they say, all right, now we're not going immediately after. We're going a long time after the switch has been closed. All right, so to draw this as a picture, up, oh, up, oh, picture. And if I was on a test, I would actually do it this way too. Draw the picture. Because it keeps you reasonably uh, honest. That way when you do something really stupid, you can sometimes catch it. All right, so here, we start at zero. And we're going to work our way up to uh, maximum current, I naught. So a long time after the short, so after a long time, all the current is going to act as if there's a short here. There's a wire, no resistance to flow. So after a long time, we're going to have current equals uh, epsilon over R, where in this case, it's going to be only R1. So we're going to have 10 over R1, which is 300. So we do 10 over 300 times 1,000. Bam, just change the 3 to a 7. We should get like a little over twice. So 33.3. Thirty-three point three. All right. Current through R two. All right. This guy's going to be zero because the uh, the current is going to be proportionally divided based on resistance between the uh, the two paths it has here between the inductor and through the resistor. Well, the inductor is offering no resistance, so all the current is going to go through there. It's like you have two stores. One store charges. I don't know. 12 cents for a pack of ramen, another store is giving away from free. How many packs of ramen is the store going to sell that's selling it for 12 cents? None, because everyone's going to go take the free stuff. When something's free, you're not going to bother paying any money for it. So this inductor, which is providing zero resistance to flow, or zero, resistor, re zero resistance to customers buying its ramen noodles, it, it's going to sell a whole lot of ramen noodles. Granted, it's not going to make any money, and it's probably a poor economic strategy. But it's not, not important. That's not the point of this thing now this analogy. So all the current, bam, straight through the inductor. Straight through the inductor, none through the resistor. Okay. It's interesting too. Because like if you're doing this then, so like if you thought about how much like the resistors were heating up, initially the R1 is only putting off a little heat. But as the uh, L2 starts, you know, charging up, I guess, um, there's actually going to be more current going through R1. And it'll actually start to get hotter. Interesting. Immediately after the switch is 
open after being closed a long time. All right, so we had the first scenario. Our um, water wheel over here is spinning like crazy, specifically at 33.3 .3 milliamps. And we then open the uh, switch. So what happens here is we then open the switch. So we have 33 milliamps going this way. So then it's going to go like that. So it's no longer going to take this path because it can't get the switch is open now. So now it's going to force the same current because it uh, inductor will oppose a change in current. It's a water wheel pushing through the current. It's going to push that current then through this other resistor. And before when they said consider down being positive or whatnot, that's what we're talking about. This part right here because we're going to have current moving upwards in the picture. So that's going to be a negative going through R2. All right, so we're going to have 33.3, .3, no change. Whoop, right there. Bam. Ooh, I like that three. That's my favorite. So stylish. Uh, the current through R2. This is going to be negative 33.3. .3. So the current only has one way to go. Uh, so it's going to have to go through R2. Um, and it's going to be negative because it's going up. Yep. At time 7 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds after the switch is open, the current through the inductor is okay. So we're going to have some sort of decay here. Hop, hop. Have a T. We'll have a current. We'll have the initial current we saw, which will be 33 milliamps, and it's going to die down like this. All right, and we're looking at this time right here, which happens to be seven times ten to the negative fourth seconds. All right, so I'm going to start by writing about formula. So I'm going to say that current equals initial current times e to negative t over tau. All right, now if I look at this, if I put like 100 in for t, we're going to have e to the negative 100, which is the same as 1 over e to the 100, which is pretty much zero. So, okay, so that's probably the right formula. Now I need to find tau, which is going to be L over R. Yep, T equals RC or L over R. <sighs> Time constant. My memory is terrible. I'm a, originally a math guy, so I can only remember like four formulas, and I used that the whole semester. So this whole idea of memorizing more than four formulas, totally foreign to me. Totally foreign. Tau equals L over R. Got it. L over R. All right. So now we need to find out what that actually is. So we know that L is a 200 millihenries, and we know that R, in this case, we're just looking at this circuit right here, is R2. So I'm going to do, oh, that's so convenient. So we have 2 times 10 to the negative third over, ah, oh, it's so big though. Didn't mean to make that big. 400. 4 times 10 to the second. Okay. Which equals 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative fifth which is, let's see, this is like 5 times 10 to the negative, so 5 times 10 to the negative 1, times 10 to the negative 5, equals 5 times 10 to the negative 6. There we go. 5 times 10 to the negative 6. Hmm. Hmm. Is that true? Maybe that's true. Yeah. I'm going to say it's true. All right. So I'm going to go from this formula then down to here. So we're going to have our initial current should be 33 times 10 to the negative third times e to the negative, now uh, we said 7 times 10 to the negative fourth over 5 times 10 to the negative sixth which equals, do we, do we want the, we want it in milliamps. So I'm just going to call it, the first part, 33 milliamps. And we'll have E to the negative 700 over 5. Whew, that's small. That's crazy small. Because, let's see, this guy, this guy right here goes away, that goes away, we get 10 to the second on top. Yeah, that's 
Okay, we can do that. So we'll do 33 times e to the negative 700 divided by 5. It's basically going to be 0, isn't it? Whoa! Let's be negative in there. Yeah, that's way smaller than I feel it should be. So we have 200 millihenries. There we go. That was my problem. Right here, we just have two zeros. 200 millihenries. So you can die right there. So 200 times 10 to the negative third is 0 0.2 over 400. No. 200 times, uh, yep, or 400. So, 0 0.2 divided by 400, that gives us uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 5 times 10 to the negative fourth. There we go. So, I'm going to Get rid of this guy. And that's seconds, and that's what tau is right there. So we're going to have e to negative 7 times 10 to the negative fourth over 5 times 10 to the negative fourth. That seems more reasonable. So we're going to have 33 milliamps times e to the negative 7, because these guys cancel. 7 fifths. Which is like 1.2. So 33 times e to the negative 7 fifths. Transcendental. Sounds so exciting when. So I'm going to say 8.13. That seems reasonable. Equals 8.13. That's milliamps. There we go. That's believable. So it's down to a quarter. And the current through I R2. So the current that goes through L then has to go back up through R2. So it's going to just be the opposite. By opposite, I mean negative 8.13. When you say opposite, it could be like, well, do you mean 1 over it? No. I just mean the negative version of it. An additive opposite. Additive inverse. That's the proper proper term. All right, so that's all there is for this problem. Um, so tau equals L over R. You have an equation, E to the negative T over tau. That's for a decay as the water wheel is slowing down. Or you have, for a water wheel spinning up, you have E to the negative T over tau, which then it goes to its maximum of uh, I not, where this goes to a maximum of, or this goes to a final destination of zero. Okay, and that's all I got for problem seven. See you, problem eight.